Привет, меня зовут Виктория, и сегодня я хочу поговорить о том, что помогает мне изучать по-русски. Но сейчас я буду поговорить английский, um, так мне uh, позже, because it's easier for me. <laughs> I will speak in English now because it's easier for me, and I don't think I'm quite ready to do a full video in Russian. But today's video is about the types of TV shows, movies, and music, and of course, what courses help me improve my Russian. I feel like my speech is honestly getting better. I'm communicating better. I'm listening better. I'm still having trouble with the endings. I wouldn't say I'm fluent completely. I think it's gonna still be a couple more years. I know I always keep saying, I'll be fluent in a couple more years, a couple more years. But guys, Russian is really, really hard and it takes a lot of time. But as you can see in the intro, I'm getting much better, much quicker, and I think my pronunciation is a little more clear. But anyway, sorry I'm not going to speak Russian in this video. I'm a little nervous and I don't think I'm ready for that. But let's get into it. The Kuknia is literally my favorite Russian show. It's about Russian cuisine, them being in different scenarios. It's super, super funny. It's honestly my type of humor. It's like dumb, goofy funny, but I love that they always have like a lesson in the end. Um, I guess a lot of Russian shows have that. They have like a Russian proverb that they say at the end of the show or something that ties everything together and I just love that. So if you haven't seen Kuknia, definitely watch it if you're trying to learn Russian. It's excellent. I've improved my speech by um you know learning the different types of silverware like how to say uh what is it L lotion no no that's a horse oh my gosh what spoon Lush loshka i already forgot spoon see you guys see i already forgot oh veal class fork okay <laughs> i'm just trying to remember what i remember from the show but anyway usually when i watch russian shows i watch it in russian with english translations and then say if I want to watch the episode again because it was so funny. I think I've watched a cooking out episode three times. One of the funny ones in like first season, I think episode 12 or something. And I watch it three times. So once I'm on the third time, I take the subtitles off and just listen. Just listen in Russian and just listen to see if I remember the words that they said and to see if I, I guess, comprehended um, the endings and all the new words that I'm learning. So cooking out guys, <laughs> just to improve, even uh, your, like the way you joke around in Russian, it's also uh, improved my humor. So I really like that show. And the next show uh, that I absolutely love, which is more serious, it's more of an action thriller. And this one is on Netflix. It's called Better Than Us. Oh my gosh, I forgot the Russian translation. I'm gonna put the Russian translation right here because I forgot how to say it, Luce, 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 Tak, Mashi? I don't know, I don't remember. But anyway, Better Than Us, I love it. It's about sex robots and how one of them is corrupted. Basically, one of the uh, robots is programmed wrong and it turns out to be like a kill robot. So it actually starts killing people. It's insane. If you guys like action thrillers, definitely watch that. It, by far my fave and I think they're coming out with another season. It's an old Russian show, but it came to the US late. I think it's about three years old for Russia, but new to the US. So if you see Better Than Us about sex robots on Netflix, watch that. It's not what you think. It's not all about sex, <laughs> which is great. The next one, the next film that I've talked about, it's kind of corny. It's giving me old um, Law and Order, CSI, Miami vibes. It's called Method. Method in English, Method in uh, Russian, I believe. But it's a, uh, it's basically an investigation show. It's it's the same as like Law and Order or like CSI, except it's less. It feels less staged and more of like, oh, these are just regular people trying to figure out who killed who, and it's a little more gory with blood. But it's also an old show, so I think your stomach can handle the blood. Oh, I would compare it to the British show Luther, except Luther is on a higher scale and a higher budget, I believe, which makes the special effects look a little more real. And Method is an older show, but I still like it. So 
definitely watch those three. And what I'm looking forward to is Farsa. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's a new Netflix series that came to the US and it's a Russian show and it's a psychological thriller. I'll put that photo down below as well. And I'm looking forward to binge watching that with Fedor. So I'm gonna let you guys know how I like that one, but I haven't watched that one yet. That's just one that I've saved. All right, guys, so let me take a bite and then we're gonna move on to the movies that have helped improve my Russian, listening, speaking, and trying to get better with my endings. The first one I want to talk about is Ya Hadeyu. Wait, let me look at my phone. Who de Who de you? Put in the comments down below if I'm saying this right. Ya Who de you? <laughs> it's called I'm Losing It in English, and I watched it about two weeks ago, and I loved it. And it's a film about loving yourself. If you don't love yourself, then no one else will. I don't want to give too much away because I hate when people give the whole premise of the story. Just watch it, look it up on Netflix. Sometimes for these Russian shows and films that I'm suggesting, you might have to change your location in uh, the Netflix uh, notifications just so you can get a lot of the Russian content. But because I'm living in Russia, this is the first thing that they're recommending me. So, Yahoo Day You, I'm Losing It, is just a beautiful film. That's all I have to say. You need to watch it. If you haven't, put it on your list. And guys, for all the films and TV shows that I'm listing and music later, put in the comments down below what you would suggest me to listen to, watch, or um, what are your favorite films. Don't forget to put in the comments down below. While I'm suggesting these to you, I want to hear what you guys have to say. Okay, moving on. The next film, oh, I forgot about this one. It's called Love Me or Hate Me. In English, it's called Love Me or Hate Me, and it's another romantic comedy. It's a great chick flick. I think it's wonderful. Um, for guys, I don't know, maybe if you're into that stuff, watch it. But for girls, definitely put that on your list. And if you guys don't like romantic comedies and you're learning Russian, then I would suggest director Yuri Bukov. And he is one of my favorite Russian directors um, that I've seen thus far. Like, all of his films I've liked. Most of them, I've seen four or five. The first one I saw was, oh, I don't know the Russian translation. Guys, sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting the Russian translations. I didn't write them down. I'm just going by what I remember it said on Netflix. Yuri Bukov's films are not on Netflix, but you can find them for like $2, two, two American dollars on like a Russian uh, website or something. That's how I found them. And it's called Fools, what is it called? The Fool, The Major, and To Live. Yeah, The Fool is one film, The Major is another, and To Live. Those films are like action thrillers, killing, um, someone's on the run. One of them was about police brutality. That one was amazing. I think that one was, uh, that one was the major. But I don't wanna go into his films, just look it up. Yuri, Yuri Bukov is his name. I hope I'm saying that right. I love his films so much that for my master's degree, I wrote like a 20 page paper on his films. They just spoke to me and I'm like another level. I think because I'm an aspiring film, actress, director, whatever, the type of content that he was creating about corruption and you know, the pros and cons of living in Russia. He, he gives it all and he's a pretty young director. I think he's in his late 30s or 40s. So I just really like the perspective that he's giving about Russia, good and bad. So definitely check him out if you're an American looking for some action thrillers that are gonna keep you on your toes. And let's move on to music. I can't think of any other Russian films. These are just the ones that I've watched recently in the past couple of years. Please put down more uh, Russian content below because I know there's so many more Russian shows and um, films that I haven't seen or that I'm not even recommending. I'm not saying these ones that I listed are the best ones. These are just the shows and uh, films that I've seen thus far as a new Russian learner. So <laughs> definitely put your thoughts in the comments down below. And last but not least, I'm going to list music because I remember when I made a video last week on Fedor's podcast and he was asking me what helps you learn Russian and I forgot to list music. So let me just dive in and give you some artists that I wrote down that are in my Spotify playlist that I listen to on the daily, okay? The first one is Kino. I just, I love their vibe. All old, like 70s, 80s, like all old music just resonates with me. Even 50s, 60s, 40s, I just love 
all the music. And the next one is Malchat Dolma. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I just found them. It's more of like an indie alternative rock vibe. Uh, I just added them to my playlist. I just found them. And Gidier Phantom, love them too. Aya by Nova. So Aya by Nova, I think she is Romanian and Russian. It's really old music. So if you're not into that type of uh, folk kind of sound, then don't don't go to Aya by Nova. But I really like the way she sings and her speech is clear so I can understand the Russian words and translate them myself just in case there isn't a translation there. Okay, and let's move on. Oh, I forgot. Chonaya Rechka. I don't know, black Rechka. I don't know what Rechka is. I have to Google that. I don't know the translation for that in English. I'm gonna find the translations and put them down below, but that's another band that I really, really like. And to move on to rap music, I would name Basta, great, love his stuff. Jacquees Anthony, I hope I'm saying his name right. He's a black Russian rapper that I recently found. And he's of he's of one of the new rappers and i really really like his flow i really, really like his speech and yeah he's a bomb russian rapper and i get that trap vibe a lot of these russian rappers don't give me that american trap original vibe so if you want some russian trap you need to go to jacuzzi anthony <laughs> he's fire i have him on my spotify playlist too and i'm gonna put some pics down below of course oxymoron i like his music but he's more of his rap reminds me of Eminem, where I can't listen to him on the daily. It's only when I'm working out, when I'm angry at life, or I need like <laughs> a release or something, you know, I listen to him. But guys, there's so many other Russian rappers and artists that I didn't list. Oh, what is that song that I... Hold up, guys, there's one more artist that me and Fedor sing every day. Like, I gotta look through my playlist. Oh my gosh, what is the name? It's in my Russian retro. And... Oh my god. Hold on. Aliens. Guys, that is my song, but that concludes today's video. That's all I have for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And don't forget to go to Be Fluent in Russian to improve your Russian like I did. I owe all of my, I guess... Uh, improvement to my husband because he really takes the time to teach me and of course if you sign up for his uh, Be Fluent in Russian course and join Be Fluent Camp, I think it's coming up in a few weeks, you can improve your Russian just like me and put in the comments down below if you would give me any I guess criticism on when I was speaking Russian in the beginning and how I can continue to improve my Russian with other suggestions that you have for TV shows and movies. But I'll see you guys next time. Пока-пока!